All right, uh, we are going to go ahead and get started. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Sayyam Patak. I am CNCF ambassador, working as a software engineer and on Kubernetes and stuff. I'm CKA, CKA certified. I'm Influx Ace. I'm Rancher Trusted Hands member, and I run the local meetups at uh, Bangalore for Docker, CNCF, uh, Rancher, and Influx. So that's about me. And I would like to thank everyone who is joining uh, uh, us today. Welcome to the CNCF webinar, uh, Declarative Host Upgrades from Within Kubernetes. Uh, we'll go through some of the uh, housekeeping items uh, before we get started. So during the webinar, you are not uh, allowed to talk as an attendee. Uh, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. Uh, there's official webinar to, uh, this is an official webinar of CNCF and as the subject to CNCF code of conduct, please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in the violation of the code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of uh, all of your fellow participants and presenters. And the recording and the slides will be posted later today by CNCF uh, webinar page. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our presenters today. Uh, we have Adrian Goins, uh, Director of Community and Evangelism at Rancho Labs, uh, Dax McDonald, Software Engineer at Rancho Labs, and Jacob Bling, Christian, uh, Principal Software Engineer at Rancho Labs. So with all of these items, I'll hand over to Adrian, Dax, and Jacob uh, to kick off your today's presentation. All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Adrian Goins, and thank you, Saeem, for that wonderful introduction. Give me a moment here. I will share my screen and we are going to dive right in. So you same already introduced us, but here we are again. I'm Adrian and I'm joined by Dax McDonald and Jacob Blaine Kristen. And these guys are way smarter than I am. Um, so I'm just here to introduce them. Talk for a moment about what Rancher, oh, we don't need this agenda slide. Talk for a moment about what Rancher believes and how we got to the particular thing that we're going to be demonstrating for you today. Rancher, first of all, everything that we do at Rancher is 100% free and open source. And we believe that the key for production quality Kubernetes at scale has three pillars. Certified Kubernetes distribution to enable computing everywhere. Centralized management to manage all of that stuff and make your life easier and then a platform for secure application deployment. I wanna stress again, everything we do is open source from top to bottom. Everything that you're going to see in anything that Rancher does, you can do your, there's no open core, there's no paid features, it's all out there. We have solutions for inter-cluster communication, container attached storage. We have Kubernetes distributions for the data center and the edge. We have a solution for multi-cluster Kubernetes management. We have a solution for managing fleets of Kubernetes clusters, and we're building an integrated deployment engine to make Kubernetes easier for developers to use. And sometimes when we're building these projects, we're able to spin off useful components that you can use anywhere. You can use them in your own Kubernetes clusters. You can take them and embed them in your own products. It's, it's all out there for you to do what you want to do with them. And one of those things that's so cool, like you look at the title of today's thing, and first of all, thank you all for joining because honestly, the title is, is pretty boring. Um, <laughs> every other title that we came up with was also pretty boring, but the technology that we're about to show you, you'll be able to walk out of here in an hour and go deploy this and go start using this in any Kubernetes cluster that you're running. And that is called, oh, my slide didn't change the system upgrade controller. Another very sexy name, right? System up, but there's, it is what it is. So with that, let me hand it over to Dax, who's gonna tell you a little, about, a little bit about what this thing does before Jacob gives you a demo. Dax, are you ready if I stop sharing? I am ready. Uh, let me just- right, I'm gonna stop sharing. It's all, all right. you, my friend. All right, let's see. Can everyone so see So I'll be my here screen? answering questions in the Q&A as well. So if you guys see anything that you have questions about, yes, we can see your screen, but it's the wrong one. Share the, oh. the other one. Okay, let me try this. Swap displays, does this work? So uh, that's good. 
So as, as, as Dax is talking and as Jacob is doing demos, if you have questions, please post those in the Q&A section and we'll be answering them directly. Or if there's a question that you specifically want Jacob or Dax to answer, you can just put their name in front of it and we'll save it for them. We'll try to pause during the demo to answer questions. Otherwise, there's a block of time at the end where we'll answer as many as we can. So Dax, take it away. All right, thank you, Adrian. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about the system upgrade uh, controller. So this is a CRD based um, controller. Um, the CRD that we've created to uh, that uh, this controller runs on top of is what we call the plan CRD. So this is just a brief uh, overview. Um, basically, if we by using the plan and the um, and the controller, we're able to form a declarative API, which is kind of the uh, fundamental concept of Kubernetes. Um, so the plan that we're, we're going to demonstrate today is going to do some really cool stuff for you. We're going to show you how to work, you know, upgrading K3S uh, Kubernetes versions um, in, actually in production today in Rancher 2.4. Um, and then we're going to kind of show you how the plan CRD works and we're going to dive into that. So just at a high level. Um, these plans describe the desired state of the cluster. So it's a declarative API. Uh, you, so as you'll see later, you know, you're, you're going to describe, I want to go to Kubernetes version 1.17. You know, what have you. And then these, uh, the controller is going to work towards upgrading your cluster, that version. Um, and it's not just Kubernetes versions that this framework is very flexible and we're actually able to upgrade specific uh, upgrade underlying kernels, uh, or even up, uh, you can even use uh, Kubernetes secrets to parameterize plans to upgrade specific packages that you care about. Um, again, these are Kubernetes native CRDs. So uh, we use, we leverage uh, things like uh, label selectors to actually choose the nodes that you want to select for upgrading. Uh, and then we actually, the work itself is performed in a Kubernetes job. Um, with an image. So actually you're going to, so really a flexible framework that I think that everyone's really gonna enjoy using. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm gonna dive into just going right into the plan CRD. So this right here is actually the plan CRD, a, a small slice of the plan CRD we use to upgrade um, K3S clusters. You don't actually don't even have to use Rancher to, uh, you know, use this plan. You can simply use the system upgrade controller standalone and uh, these plans will work just fine. So I just kind of wanted to walk you through some of the high level understanding of uh, the custom resource definition. And for those of you that aren't familiar maybe with uh, CRDs at all, this is kind of uh, what you'd actually be applying, you'd, you know, kubectl apply a plan that looks like this to uh, perform an upgrade after you've installed the system upgrade controller into your cluster. So, you know, this plan is really an outstanding intent to mutate your cluster. Here we have, uh, I'm gonna go through some of the things on the spec here. So one of the things in the spec, we have a version and that's really describing, that's the version of Kubernetes one two. This is, you know, 1.17.2-K3S1. Um, and then, so that describes uh, what basically is going to, is going to inform when this uh, plan is run to completion. So is this plan, we're gonna keep creating jobs and keep working, uh, trying to make progress as this, uh, until the system of grid controller sees the Kubernetes version is the same as that. Um, additionally, we have concurrency one here. Uh, concurrency is a field that uh, we leverage to basically um, provide uh, control over how many nodes are gonna be upgraded at a time. So concurrency one here is going to perform a very basic rolling update. It is going to upgrade one node and then wait for, um, wait for that, that, that upgrade to complete successfully and for that node to come back up uh, before moving on to the next node. And then we have this node selector here, which is actually going to uh, match the K3S upgrade uh, label on the uh, un underlying nodes. And then of course, uh, we're using service accounts and uh, various pieces of RBAC to uh, you know, provide the permissions to do this. So you, 
And then uh, another very important thing that we have here is the image that's actually doing this. You're uh, welcome to go find this on GitHub. There's Rancher K3S upgrade. Really, it's a simple uh, image that's just going to swap out the uh, K3S binaries. Uh, we're lucky with K3S. That's a really uh, painless upgrade process. But again, you can, uh, um, as you build images, the system of great control really provides the framework around which to um, basically do these declarative uh, updates. So, and then of course, another few things, a uh, drain force here true. Again, we're kind of helping you along the way with codifying best practices, right? Like if you're going to take a node down, you probably wanna drain that node first. Um, force, you know, we're gonna go a little more, uh, it's going to actually go in there and uh, basically ensure that everything is off that node before it gets upgraded. And there's a few other uh, commands here too. You can see the full CRD definition on the uh, K3S, or the, the system upgrade controller uh, GitHub page. So continuing on here. So this is the you know plan CRD continued. So the first, uh, first plan I showed you was a very small uh, version that shows you um, just how to upgrade K3S only. This is actually a full system kernel upgrade that's parameterized with Kubernetes secrets. And I think uh, Jacob's gonna really do a really awesome demo of this later, which is really going to dive into uh, some of the, oh. This, this one, by the way, is, is just curl and SSL. Um, but the one, the, one I, the one I'm doing is for upgrading the kernel. Yes, yeah, this is, yeah, correct. This is just uh, showing you that how granular you can get with system, uh, the system upgrade controller. Like you can see in, in our secret here, you can see that we're uh, specifying versions of curl, open SSL, and that when we run this image, it's going to upgrade those specific packages on our node. So then you can, the system upgrade controller allows you to do stuff in higher level, you know, Kubernetes YAML that actually goes down and affects your underlying host. Um, a few other things that, in, again, concurrency two here, we're actually going to upgrade two nodes at a time. And, you know, really this is just a quick demo showing that uh, how we use secrets to basically provide additional parameterization on top of the plan CRD. Um, and that is, I think, it from me, Jacob. Do you, I think, uh, do you want to take it from there? I think that's kind of a brief overview of the plans and everyone kind of has a basic understanding of uh, where we're going to be going. I have a quick question. Is this currently in anything? This was taken out of K3OS, but is this in Rancher 2.4? Yes. So the previous one right here, this is actually mm -hmm. directly the plan from Rancher 2.4. And you don't even need to run Rancher 2.4. Um, this is a, you know, it's actually on this Rancher K3S upgrade. Uh, free, feel free to go to that GitHub. And if you have K3S clusters, you can now specify uh, any version of Kubernetes that K3S supports, you can go right to that. So it makes, and it really, I think, simplifies the upgrade process, which I think is one of the still rough edges in Kubernetes administration. Um, if you use something like system upgrade controller, you won't have to, you know, it's going to do a lot of the best practices for you. Like it's going to drain nodes, it's going to mark them as unschedulable, uh, you know, and do, you know, with the current concurrency of one, do a slow rolling update. Nice. Yeah. Um, there aren't any questions specifically related. Actually, there are two questions that aren't specifically related to this, but I'll throw them out there and then we'll dive into the demo. Uh, Jack asks, how does it interact with the cluster autoscaler? How does it interact? Either of you can answer that. Um, Jacob, do you want to take that one or? Sure. Uh, so, the only real way that it interacts with the cluster auto scheduler or is by drains will you know negatively impact and, and scale down, uh, not scale down replica sets, but basically evict pods from nodes uh, such that those replica sets will want to uh, pull schedule pods, uh, but they can't because the the node is then tainted as uh, unschedulable. Um, really, um, that's the extent of it. Uh, and that's optional, right? The drain um, I've got in the K3OS plan by default, and we have it in the K3S plans that are that come with Rancher um, 
um, 2.4, um, but you don't have to use it. Uh, again, this is a way of gracefully scooching, you know, workloads off of off of your, so you can you can do some operations and possibly bounce them if you need to. I hope that gets okay. to the question. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Uh, Raj asks, what kind of privileges does the SA account need in order to do the system upgrade? And if you're going to talk about that in your demo, you can just say we'll we'll cover that. No, I mean I I, I kind of gloss over it. Um, the <laughs> it's a it's a very privileged account, right? So um, the system upgrade controller itself needs a service account such that it can edit nodes, uh, list and create jobs uh, and pods, of course, in its own workspace in its own namespace. Uh, but the real one, the real big one, is is modifying nodes, right? Because the controller, when a job is complete, the way that um, it uh, sort of uh, keeps track of that for itself is by tagging the node, labeling the node with a particular hash, which is the current latest version. And in the same operation, if you've got a drain or a cordon configured, the controller uh, marks that node as schedulable again, right? So it needs, it, it's really got, the controller itself has got a lot of privileges. Then there's the pods, the, the general run. Um, and as you can imagine, if you're mutating your node, you need essentially full access. And you've got even, um, more permissions than a typical privilege pod. So these pods are privileged. They've also got CAPSIS boot capability, right? So they can trigger a reboot if they need to. Uh, and they've also got the host, PID, IPC, and net namespaces. And again, those are to facilitate um, various um, reboot regimes. Uh, uh, for instance, K3OS, one of the things that it needs to do is do an NS enter into uh, the, the pit one namespace such that it can then invoke the reboot because there's no other way to make that happen. Uh, and so that's one of the things that, that's one of the things that it does. And I th think that pretty much covers it, covers, covers it. So privilege, CAPSIS boot, okay. host, net pit, IPC namespaces, which is, you know, basically right. you've got control of the node. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot. All right, uh, let's, let's roll into the demo. Oh, uh, there's one more question uh, before we get um, that I'd like to actually touch on because I don't really speak to it here as part of the demo, um, which is okay. uh, uh, from uh, Mukesh, which is I believe that uh, it's assuming that the server has internet access enabled. Uh, what if you want to get images is via internal artifact? Yeah, so um, K3S allows you to configure um, uh, what we call private repositories, which are essentially mirrors. Um, so you can definitely run this in an air gap situation. The only problem is, is then of course, because everything is based, you need to make sure that you curry your images into your air gapped environment. But, but it does work. Uh, we, we, we tested that in multiple different scenarios. Okay, great. Right. So. All right, I'll stop sharing. And then. You get the correct screen. So for my background today, I chose uh, a picture of my cluster that I'll be showing later. Um, can we see my system upgrade controller customization script? Yes, sir. Right, right screen. Okay, good. All right. So, all right. What I've got set up for you today is I've got a small multi-pass uh, multi cluster of Ubuntu Bionic nodes running locally uh, on a Linux machine here. And I've sort of gone ahead and downloaded basically almost all of the content I possibly could. Um, and I've done the same thing for the for the other cluster as well. And so what I was going to show is a slightly more embellished version of the uh, plan that that Dax was uh, talking about. And let's actually do, let's do less so we can page through that, right? So as you can see, um, I've got a bit more um, node selector expressions on there, and I'm doing a slight, I'm doing a, a more updated version of, of K3s, uh, but it's it's largely the same plan. Um, uh, you can see I've got uh, for this case, we've got master set to cordon instead of drain, and that's because I'm not really running any workloads, but uh, I wouldn't be running much on the masters anyway, and so it's safe to just mark a note as well and move on uh, because it makes the demo uh, a little bit more brief. Um, let's see, and then the only other real sort of trick that we didn't mention with um, these, you'll notice there's, there's two plans here staring at you, and there's a there's a server plan and an agent plan. Uh, and these are just sort of K3S uh, um, 
categories. Um, you know, uh, servers run the API server and controller nodes and all that stuff, whereas agents are just workers. Um, and what we've got going on here is there's this prepare statement that we didn't uh, talk about. Um, and what uh, a prepare um, uh, section is in a plan is a way of saying, hey, before you do anything, this init container needs to run to completion. Um, and, oh, I'm actually pulling in the wrong image, so I better edit that on here. Um, this, you know, this, this init container needs to, to run to completion before we can move on to doing the drain or anything else. And what this allows us to do is to, um, server nodes and agent nodes, are the, the plans are going to be triggering jobs at the exact same time. Uh, and this allows us to say, okay, uh, the agent plans, the jobs for the agent plans are going to wait for the, um, the server plans to complete before they're done. All right, so for me, it's hard to talk and type at the same time. So let's, I'm assuming there's some bug fixes in there, so let's get that good. All right, so a cool thing about, let's take a look. Uh, I don't think I've actually installed the upgrade controller here at all, so. I'm a, I'm a big fan of kubectl get all dash a. Um, you can see there's no system upgrade controller deployed, so let's, uh, let's do that. Um, I've got um, a script here, which is actually using customize. So one of the cool things that customize lets you to do is you can dump a customization.yaml at the top of your repo and point to various other things, multiple different uh, manifests in your repo. Uh, and it will essentially process that and output um, and do some, you know, uh, some targeted uh, replacement of values for you so that you've got um, sort of manifest that, uh, that does what you need it to do. Um, and so in this case, I'm gonna pipe it directly into uh, kubectl so I can, um, pardon all the beeps. So customize build is gonna pull that down. It's gonna, it would actually output it a big old manifest for deploying the system upgrade controller. And so now we'll take a look at that. Container creating, did I not? Well, thankfully that container's not super easy. No. Oh, I'm not doing a watch. Big fan of watch as well. Okay, up and running. Great. Uh, now, the other things we're gonna wanna do is deploy the K3S upgrade plan. So, and I'm trying to remember if they will get picked up right away. I believe they will because we've got concurrency. Yep. And I believe all of those conditions will match right away. So, And to immediately jump over here. Oh, and we've got some jobs. So we've got a server job running right here, and we've got two agent job running, which is as, oh, it looks like the server job has already been applied because the thing is bounced. Well, this is, this is typical behavior. You'll see it, this is what it looks like when you're trying to constantly pull it. And we've got an upgraded version of the, the master right away. And you'll notice that scheduling was disabled uh, when it bounced. Uh, and you'll notice that I believe no, nope, you don't see an unknown state. Never mind, that's different. Uh, okay, now we're back to being schedulable, and the agent nodes have already been applied to, or start starting to be applied. We've marked them as disabled. We're forming a drain on there. Uh, so you see a lot of churn. You'll see some workload bouncing around. Um, now's a good time for questions while this is going on. Um, but what's going to happen here is that the upgrade controller, um, the first plan for the server finished. Um, and then it, uh, the, 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 uh, the agent uh, plans waited. Uh, as soon as that was done, um, it, they, they began to, they, they exited their prepare container and they're moving, moving forward, moving forward. Uh, we can see we've got all of the jobs complete. And just like that, we've upgraded our case through rescue. Nice. Nice. You still yeah, want questions or you? Yeah, if you see well, we question. only have one. We have one question. The question is from Gorov. And he says, if we were to port the system controller to another Kubernetes stack, 
would we use separate plans to do OS and Kubernetes upgrades? Probably yes. Um, it's it, at least in my opinion, it's good to have a high a bit high amount of granularity um, because one of the things that you get is you can run um, multiple system upgrade controllers uh, because they, they only uh, focus on their own namespace that they're deployed into. Um, and the reason that I'm mentioning that is because you may want to run multiple at a time, you know, taking care of different things because maybe you've got a service account that uh, does a bit more. Maybe you've got one service account, you know you don't have plans that do things that they don't need and so you've got some limited um, permissions that you're, you're, you're giving to your, to your pod for whatever reason that happens to be. Um, but let's see, getting back to doing them separately, I believe um, you really want to make the smallest amount of item potent change at a time that you can and multiple plans in a single namespace will be run serially on a particular node. Uh, one of the things that I've got built in here is that you can see that I'm spawn, I'm, I'm triggering the creation of jobs which are creating pods, right? So um, in those pods, I've got some pod anti-affinity with anything in the same namespace with the same controller. Does that make sense? So yeah. you can run a number of things or, you know, or declare the intent for a number of a different upgrade, only one will apply at a time. And that will have a nice, okay, I'm applying this thing, and I'm applying this thing. Now, if you want to do that all at once, you can, but I think that's really kind of, I think that tends to um, be a, a, a paver on the road to disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Any other you questions? Are another... Yeah, there's but, another, I, I, I wasn't sure if you were going to continue, but. I wanted to mention, uh, Go for it. it is perfectly suited to any particular stack. I mean, I just happen to use K3S, which because that's one of our products, but it's also super easy to use, right? It, it makes the stand-up of clusters just kind of brain dead easy, uh, which I love. Right, um, right. But it, it should, it, there's, there's, there's nothing that ties system upgrade controller to any of our technologies. It is a standalone general purpose um, controller. Farsad asks if it's possible to do expansion or contraction of pods during the upgrade. Expansion or contraction of pods, um, meaning would you mod your replica sets? Uh, I'm not, I guess I'm not. Yeah, it sounds sounds like could you also change the number of replicas that you're deploying? Uh, you could. That's how I would interpret uh, it. You definitely could. I mean, you know, so the uh, the prepare contains a lot, right? Um, you've got the same permissions uh, that the rest of the um, containers in that pod, which is a lot. Um, so provided that you've given that pod permissions to, to modify other nodes or replicates, um, default, you know, you know, the manifest that I have is, is this cluster mid, so you can go hog wild with it. Um, you can definitely make some changes if you need to. Like, you know, if you need to label a repl replica set to tag it for whatever reason and scale it down, uh, you could do that. Uh, I, would, I would advise pulling that off in a prepare uh, script. Okay. So we said that this is in 2.4, but the answer made it sound like it might only be available for K3S in 2.4. Um, is it available for any Kubernetes cluster that Rancher 2.4 is managing? In 2.4, it's only available for K3S clusters right now. We, like, we're hoping okay. to expand it to more, but only for K3S right now. Got it. Sweet. Uh, and... Let's I want to get see. this next one going. All right, go for it. I'll I'll hold oh, questions yeah. until you're ready again. But it takes a while. Like uh, this, this will be a good one to field more questions because the full thing takes a number of minutes. But I want to see the nodes go through them uh, before we move on. Okay. To the demo. Um, so you know, so uh, what we've got going here is you know you see I'm running Bionic nodes and by default these come with the 4.15 series kernel. Um, and you know what? I've decided I would like to get the the latest and greatest, yes, it's two years old, but I've got the hardware equivalent or hardware, whatever the heck that, that HWE for uh, Canonical that allows me to use the kernel from uh, another thing I can't pronounce, which is Yone, right? I, I, get, anyway, I get the 5.3 series kernel in, 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 a bun, in an LTS Ubuntu release. And I'd like to make that, you know, happen. Uh, so you can see I've got it parameterized with a version. I've got 5304602. That was the latest as of last night. 
uh, or this morning at three in the morning. Um, <laughs> I've got an upgrade script to essentially say, you know what? Um, in a container, in a Bionic container, update um, app get and then install, because I'm running in a VM, I'm installing the virtual um, HWE 18.04, the, the virtual headers and the virtual image. Uh, and at the end of that, this is kind of a, a neat little, um, kind of a, almost a bit of a gotcha with vector controller uh, comes into play. Um, you can see that I've got, if run reboot's required, then trigger reboot, otherwise don't. Um, and you could say, well, you're only gonna run it uh, the one time, um, but because I'm running this, in, invoking this reboot from within inside a, of a container, I'm actually shutting down the Kubernetes instance in this case before it has a chance to mark the job as completed. So when it comes back up, it's going to run it again. Um, but reboot required won't be there, and everything will just sort of be like, oh, I'm already updated. And so uh, what we're getting, what, what we're doing with this little bit of script magic is ensuring I impotency, right? And that you get to the end state that you want without unnecessary side effects. So if you've already done a reboot, we're not going to need to do it again. Um, and so you know, this is the this is the script. This is where most of the meat of it is. This is just the selection criteria with a bit of, you know, a bit of, of verbiage to, to make it accessible. You can see I've, I've scaled down the plan to be a zero, and this is to sidestep a bug with labeling a number of nodes at the same time. Uh, that said, I believe that I've already applied plan labels. Where are my fat fingers coming in. So yeah, so I've decided to only, I've decided to only uh, label the workers so we can run this plan on it. Right? So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to edit this plan and give it a concurrency of two. And oops, not twenty. All right, so something we can see here is that we are, we are applying two of them at once. Now, unfortunately, these take a few minutes, and I should have started this earlier before. I, <laughs> this is the reason why I wanted to, to start. This takes anywhere between two to three minutes. Uh, so just, if there's any questions, now's a great time. Uh, if there's we have enough, questions. Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's tackle those. All right. Uh, so Makesh asks, is it possible to use this controller just to upgrade the network configuration in a bare metal environment? Yes, um, you could definitely uh, use it to do anything that would mutate a node. If that happens to be, you know, whether you're installing a package or dropping a YAML file, you're mutating state. So it, it is a perfect candidate. And one of the things that we haven't really um, addressed, but we've hinted at a bit, is that um, this is like, this has a lot of overlap, overlap with traditional configuration management, right? I mean, a lot of these things should look and sound kind of familiar. Uh, we're just using um, Kubernetes as the reconciliation loop and the driver, right? To make all that work and using native resources to, to pull it off. Um, and that gets me to the fact that the way that the system upgrade controller knows not to keep applying a plan to a node is that it labels a node with the updated version at the time that it applied it, right? So what that means is plans can mutate over time and, and apply multiple times to a single node. Um, but as they, you know, when they're in a single state, that is an outstanding intent to mutate individual nodes as per the node selector criteria in your cluster. So that's a long way of saying you can totally do configuration management and configure your NIC in a hardware very middle environment. <laughs> Sorry, long answer is yes. thing. <laughs> no, but the, I mean, this thing is so dynamic and so powerful and so flexible. So here we flexible. go, we two nodes, I've already got good kernels. Nice. Right, and they'll slowly come up. And so one of the things that I mentioned that you'll see is like, oh, we've got these unknown jobs, right? And that's because the reboot happened before the controller could mark the job as completed. Um, but then when it came back up, it ran it again, because you can see two jobs on node four, right? 
And then this one right. ran, did nothing, immediately completed, and then the controller knows, okay, that node's done. Nice. Do you recommend running the master plan or the node plan first, or is does it matter? So it depends on what you're doing. Um, in, uh, in the Kubernetes case, uh, you want to upgrade your API servers first. Uh, so it's good in, in this case, if you're doing K3S, to upgrade your server nodes first and then do your um, not, you know, then do your nodes that aren't, aren't labeled with role or what is it? Role node, Kubernetes.io, master equals true. Um, and so those are the selection criteria. One is equals true and one is, and then the, and then the inverse of that is that, that, that it's not true. Uh, and those are your primary selection criteria for your two different uh, planes. All right, I'm just answering another question in text. Uh, Dominic asks, if it's possible to schedule these upgrades where you could, uh, for example, say that you wanted them to run at a particular time or day. So um, yes and no, uh, that having um, a cron job for, or not a cron job, but having a, um, a cron expression for scheduling when to apply these has been a feature request. Um, I don't think anyone's actually submitted it, but somebody internally asked about it. Um, so it's something that I'm thinking about when I get time to work on this. Uh, I'm working on a number of things, <laughs> um, but uh, so that's the that's kind of the no part. But the, the the sort of yes answer to it is is that you can have a cron job that runs every so often, and then sets the version in the plan CRD, um, and then that will trigger applications because the controller will say. Um, this has changed, therefore the hash has changed, therefore I know I need to apply this to the nodes that are in the selection criteria. And so you can definitely, you know, um, cobble together a number of uh, existing resources plus this plan to make such a thing work. Okay. Gaurav asks another question that I think is interesting. Uh, we, we create tools to solve problems. And anytime that we use a tool, like if I'm using a hammer, there's lots of other things that I can use instead of a hammer. I could use my fist. I could use a rock. I could use a piece of wood. So if, if somebody wasn't using the system upgrade controller and they wanted to do this via you know, some other manual means, what exactly are we replacing? Yeah, so that's actually... A really good question and it kind of digs into why I started to develop this uh, specifically for K3 OS. Um, so, you know, I was brought in, brought on, I, I came to Rancher in right after Labor Day, sort of started the day after Labor Day last year. Uh, tar tar targeted to work on K3 OS specifically, pick up that project, um, have fun with it. And one of the things that was missing was an upgrade story. Um, the community member had um, provided, uh, sub, uh, contributed some scripts to make that work, and um, that was all manual. That was all manual work, and I'm like, you know what? It would be, you know, and 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 it was manual to run the scripts. It was manual to uh, re, uh, remount the, the node that the rootfs and the kernel was on because by default that's mounted as read only. Like all of these things that you had to do were. Um, being done manually, but they were eminently scriptable. I mean, I've, I've done DevOps. I, it, it's it's not hard. It's just a little bit tedious um, to get all these things together. And so, for putting together the upgrade story for K3OS, I'm like, you know what? I'm a big fan of the command pattern um, that is embodied in containers, right? Which is a container can be your content as well as the actions to take with that content, right? Uh, in that case, it's a perfect vehicle for delivering an upgrade. Uh, so for K3OS. I made it so we were publishing images, and then I worked on the upgrade controller so that it could pull down an image and apply it. Right. So this is a really long answer, and I apologize. And it's very specific to K3OS, but um, the, long, the the short answer is I'm replacing manual process with right. things that are easy to understand because you can see it in a um, container definition. Right. So mm -hmm. taking that manual process and trans transcribing it into um, a more declarative container definition, and then you've um, a very nice way of understanding uh, how your systems are going to change. Uh, and so, uh, since I've been speaking to K3OS, and this upgrade actually um, went quicker today than it did yesterday, um, I hope we're doing okay on time. Oh, screen.
sorry, when I'm on demos, I'm all about shortcuts. So I've got a four node K3 OS cluster, heterogeneous. I've got, let's do the, uh, um, darn it. Um, well, let's just say this. Um, I've got two nooks, uh, eight gig nooks running uh, i7 processors, i5, I forget. Um, not super fast, but they're nice. Running K3OS uh, 091, uh, which runs K3OS, um, which is why I developed the system up for controller four initially. I've also got uh, an RPI3 and an RPI4. Um, the RPI3 is, for some reason, only got half memory, but the RPI4 has got four gigs. Um, and those are based off of, those are um, K3OS overlays on top of, 19, uh, Ubuntu 19.10. Um, and they're all running in a cluster together. And I thought, you know what? It would be a, a cool thing on a demo to just go wild and upgrade a heterogeneous cluster with a single declaration. Hope that sounds, I mean, to me, that's wild and cool. <laughs> I hope it sounds <laughs> cool to other people. Um, but <laughs> getting back to the thing that I was talking about of replacing manual process or something that you can inspect and understand a, a bit better. Um, I wanted to take a look at the plan. So, let's do this. So there's only one plan by default here. Um, and don't mind the stuff at the top there, that's just a bunch of noise from, from the Wrangler. Um, but you can see that uh, one thing that we didn't mention is that uh, you've also got the ability to um, trigger your upgrade or get your version values from an external source, what we call a channel. Uh, and a channel is just, um, if you're familiar with like what's this, this URL right here, which is a, a GitHub um, browser URL, which will redirect you to whatever the latest uh, non pre release tag is. Um, this is what um, the controller expects. It expects a 302 for the location. Um, and the last element of that path is going to be the tag, aka the version to use. Um, and so that would replace, if, if you use version, it replaces channel, but if you don't have version, you gotta have at least a version or channel um, to get um, these definitions through um, to work with the upgrade control. Um, I've got a concurrency of zero here because I didn't want it to apply by accident. Um, we've got the drain going on as well. Let's see, oh, but speaking to, um, that original question, which is, what are, what are we replacing? Um, and this was a way of defining, okay, here's my upgrade. I've got a command I need to run, which is K3OS. K3OS is an all one binary, a little bit like, like uh, Ranger OS is ROS. Um, and I want to run the upgrade subcommands. I'm going to parameterize it, say, you know what? If the kernel's there, upgrade that. If the rootfest is there, upgrade that. Before you do any of that, if you need to remount, remount, read, write, um, sync when you're done reboot when you're done, if you've made a change. And here's a lock file in case somebody was, you know, in case to, to, to lock out somebody that was by chance running an upgrade manually on the host. Mm -hmm. First one in wins. Um, and then there's the source and target, the, the source and destination, right? So another, another thing the system upgrade controller does is it mounts the nodes root file system into the container slash host. And so that's why I'm saying, okay, the source is from the container's K3OS system to the host's K3OS system. I hope that's clear. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't usually speak this much in the day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, All right, there are, there are two more questions, but let me know when it looks, sounds like you're about yeah, to so go I'm on something else. I'm gonna this off and try to listen to you while you relay the question, if that's cool. Okay, you kick that off. I'm going to finish typing an answer here, and then I will read. I will read. <laughs> okay, uh, Senol asks, what about a heavily loaded environment that has some failure? Um, can it roll back? Does it roll back without issues? How, how, would, how would you handle that? Right now, rollbacks are a manual affair, so backs um, use the right the exact right wording, which is we do a very simple rolling update. <laughs> um, and the concurrency is essentially slots that you can tolerate being down. 
And if they fail, they will hang there and they, they won't move on until concurrent, it won't apply into other nodes until those concurrency slots are fixed, until those failed jobs have been addressed in some way or another. Um, mm. So all that is to say is rollback is a manual affair at this point in time. Okay. An anonymous attendee asks, is this aware of who the etcd leader is and does it handle migrating the leader to another node while things are being upgraded? No, that's, uh, that's the sort of thing that you would have to sort of codify in uh, interlocking plans a la K3S upgrade. Okay. The last question that we have right now is from Farzad, who asks if Rancher does the upgrade in multiple clusters simultaneously or sequentially, or if it even can do it multiple clusters at all. Dax, you want to answer that? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so like sort of asking the system upgrade controllers, it's actually somewhat decentralized. Um, there's no requirement for Rancher. So you can, if you have five clusters with the system upgrade controller, and you launch a plan in every single cluster, um, the moment the controllers in those clusters see those plans, they'll kick off and they'll start uh, uh, performing, you know, the, the work. So yeah, for branch two out of four, we only support K3S clusters right now, but uh, yeah, you can launch those and at the same time, whatever order you want. But yeah, there's no requirement on Ranger. Even uh, the, okay, so, so whether it's sequential or simultaneous is actually at the discretion of the operator who launches the plans. I think, so are they, I think, are they talking about just in the Rancher case, like how we specifically do it in Rancher or if... Well, he, he's specifically asking, does Rancher do the upgrade in multiple clusters simultaneously or sequentially? Uh, it can be simultaneous, like the multiple clusters. Um, yeah, it could, you know, you could trigger the upgrade in two clusters at the same time. And because they don't have any dependency on Rancher, they would occur at the same time. Okay, and, and is is the process triggered, is it actually triggered independently for each cluster or is there a way to take a central plan and say, apply this plan to these five clusters? There is not yet a way to do that, of applying a single plan to multiple clusters. No, you'd actually, yeah, you'd have to go in there and you'd have to basically, what it's doing is it's sending a plan to that downstream cluster. Got it, all right. That's the last question for now. So we have, uh, actually we, well, we normally leave 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. <laughs> There's, we have no more cues. So if you want to continue for a few more minutes, and I'll let you know if other questions roll in. Yeah, so what's going on here is the, uh, unfortunately, the master node got upgraded first. <laughs> and so I'm waiting for it to come back up. Oh, hey, ping responds. Good, great. Oops. Let's see if SSH will respond. Come on. There we go. So just to recap, you've shown upgrading the kernel, upgrading individual packages, and upgrading the Kubernetes version in the different things that you've demoed today. Yeah. And then this is upgrading K3OS, which is kind of a bundle of user space, kernel, uh, kernel on, on uh, Intel hardware, and um, K3OS at the same time. Right? So you can see the, the OS versions was upgraded here. The K3OS version yep. was upgraded here. And the kernel was upgraded as well. It was like 30, yeah, it was 37, and now it's 43 generic. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, what's going on here is that I'm showing this hopefully working magically with heterogeneous nodes, right? Because one of the things that I do at K3OS is publish manifested images um, such that I get to use a single plan to define what your upgrade should look like. And then they go and uh, pull down the hardware specific one uh, 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 on uh, individual nodes. So while, while this is in K3OS and, and is part of K3OS and it's in Rancher 2.4 for, for the K3OS support, this can run in any Kubernetes cluster. So if somebody is attending the webinar right now and they're not using any of those things, how can they get started using this? Yeah, I think probably the best bet is to take a look at the examples directory, which I was actually in the middle of reworking yesterday, but uh, didn't get any finished. So like, you know, uh, like this is this is um, what a, a snippet that uh, I think this is the CRD that uh, the DAX was showing. Right? This this shows you how can you configure a secret to encapsulate a script to be run, 
um, as well as parameterize it with maybe individual packages that you may want to update. Right? Like this is a lot like what you know in your Ansible would be your this is your individual um, Debian packages. Here's the names. Here's the versions. Here's how you make that happen. Right. Um, and this is this is what Ansible is doing in the background, you know, folks. Um, <laughs> or maybe doing an update instead of an install, but um, you know, and then it's showing how to ch root to host, and then use the host systems packaging, right, as a way of pulling that upgrade off. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably the best entry into it is to take a look at you know the examples. And uh, as far as deploying. As far as deploying the system upgrade controller into a Kubernetes cluster, we have that in the docs as well. Um, I do not. It's just a matter of copying the manifest, right? So um, let's see. It's just a matter of copying this manifest into Q and, and kubectl applying it. Uh, that's it. Nice. Pow. Done. Pow. Easy. <laughs> now. One thing you okay. want to keep in mind is, you know, the caveat is clustered at the moment. Um, I haven't okay. gone through the trouble of spelling out all the individual permissions that needs that that pods will need, uh, or the controller will need. Uh, it's something that I've been meaning to do. Uh, but right now, you know, we're we're in a very privileged setup. So you know, be mindful of the content that you're pulling in and executing. Yeah. That actually leads to a question from Dominic, where he asked if we have plans for something like a system update controller images hub, where people could share images or manifests or things and, and other people could use them. Has that even come up as an idea? Does it seem like a good idea? Uh, I mean, I like it. It's, it's, an, it's something that I've thought of. Um, it's not something I've begun to tackle, <laughs> but it's a great idea. Sure. Great idea. I love it. Actually. I think I think the reusability factor of it is is really good as long as people understand that you should you should check what you're running before you just go apply it with root privileges yeah. on your cluster. Yeah. I mean, I think in most cases, especially the early adopters, uh, these these images are going to be the kind of things that you either craft yourself or they come mm -hmm. from the source that is the you know sort of uh, a deployment of the upgrade controller is co-located with the 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 bits that you're using. You know, in, like in this case, K3OS, right? Like, the image that I'm pulling down is K3OS. Hey, did this thing's upgrade? Oh, the RPI three <laughs> is the RPI three did not get updated, but the RPI four did. That's something. I'll have to look into what happened there. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, any more any more questions? No more questions. We still have a couple minutes left. Let's. Let, I have a question then. In this in this situation, you've got the Raspberry Pi three did not get updated, and you say you'll have to go look into that. How would you handle this? Would you log into that and perform an update manually? Would you downgrade everything that you did? What what what's the process you would follow? Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm seeing that it's not ready. So what that's telling me is uh, it probably you got to boot. It's it's either taking a long time to boot up, or it's got some other failure. So in this case, I would. I would have to switch out my hardware and hook up the monitor and keyboard and figure out what's going on. Um, it could also be that that thing is just, it's so it's, it's running on a, a hair's margin. It's got like no memory. Um, and, <laughs> uh, it could be that it's just so, um, like these are, these are both running off of external hard drives. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at it, but I mean, it works for okay. RPI anymore, so that's something. <laughs> right. Oh, there it is. It updated. Did it? Hey, all right. Yeah. So it's just the, Nice. It's just slow. This is awesome. So I didn't. I didn't practice this at all. By the way, <laughs> I said <set this laughs> like, I know it works on the Nook. It's going to work on the RPIs, and it did. Awesome. We had a question just pop up from Mike, who asks if there's any plans to integrate cron-like behavior to implement the glue of a cron job changing a hash in a standard or integrated way. Uh, well, because the system upgrade controller is meant to be general purpose, and I feel like that particular bit, you know, how you get a version into a plan, there's so many different ways, right? Like the plan is the local, mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of different paths you can get to them. Um, I, for me, I don't have a use case where I need a cron job to do that yet. So I don't mm -hmm. plan on developing it, but, you know, contributions are welcome. Um, sure. But then there's also Open the source. Right. Then there's the, the, the other side of it, which is um, if there isn't a feature request out there, I want to get one um, sort of outstanding. 
that you know discusses um, when to apply. You know, when is when is an appropriate window to apply upgrades, right? Because they may be different per node, um, and I want to figure out like what's what what, make, what makes that functionality valuable um, to people. Okay. We are coming up on the top of the hour. I see Saeem just popped back in. We have one last question where somebody says that the manifest specifies system upgrade job kubectl image is rancher kubectl v1.17.0 and wants to know if it'll work on earlier Kubernetes versions. Uh, so if you um, override that environment variable uh, with the, uh, for the system upgrade controller, uh, you can definitely um, you know, get an appropriately compiled kubectl for your architecture um, and shim that in there. Um, okay. Right now, that image is only built for 1.17. Um, it's it's meant it. to track kubectl right now. It's, it's a bit behind. Um, but you could definitely right. um, make it go a little bit further behind. Now, now, the, now the thing is, is um, the other caveat to that answer, the system worker controller is compiled against, or built with Wrangler, uh, which I believe is referencing either the 1.16 or the 1.17 series, which means your backward support is only goes as far as 1.15. Okay. I got to catch you off there because we got less than a minute left and I know Saeem wants to wrap it up. So thank you so much, Jacob and Dax, for your demo. And Saeem, all you. Okay, great. Thanks, Adrian, Dax, and Jacob for the great presentation, a great demo with 100% success rate. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. And we answered all the questions as well for today, so which is great. Uh, thank you for joining us today. The webinar recording and the slides will be online later today. And we are looking forward to see you in future CNCF webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.